Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sunday Morning Shred. I'm your host, Mark Murray. This is the show where you wake up Sunday morning, you grab your hot cup of coffee or your morning tea, your soda. If you're a crazy guy, you grab your beer. Whatever you like on Sunday mornings or even Monday morning, Tuesday morning, any day of the week, this show is available to you, but it comes out every Sunday with new episodes. So today we're going to be doing some fun stuff. We're going to be talking lots of guitar stuff, of course, um, and we're going axe hunting. So if you don't know what axe hunting is, every day I start my day with a cup of coffee and I go on eBay, Reverb, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, anywhere I can find a deal on used guitars. And I'm looking for good priced guitars, things that could be fixed up that are marked down, things that are extra affordable, good prices. And I screenshot them. I bring them here on the show for you guys to see them. So we got a bunch of really cool, interesting, different guitars this week. After that, we got some questions. So I grab all the questions you guys leave down in the comments here on YouTube or sometimes on Instagram or my email. I compile those and I bring them to you and I answer them here. So we got a bunch of them this week because I just posted a video. Actually, uh, it was earlier this week, just a couple days ago, about Dimebag Daryl and the reunion of Pantera. So we'll get into that. You guys had a lot to say. And I actually recorded it earlier today, so already there's a ton of comments. People are going off on it on both sides of all these arguments. I guess I dropped a couple grenades in there because I set some people off. So let's head over to the computer and start looking at some guitars. All right, so check this thing out. This is the first one I found, and I have never seen this guitar before. This is a Gibson Flying V2. Have you ever seen one of these before? Do you have any experience with these kinds of guitars? Talk about them in the comments, fill us in, inform us, let us know what the deal was with these because I've never seen one of these before. So the, they were made in, from 1979 to 1982. This one's uh, four grand. If you're checking this out, you, chances are you already know all about them. This Gibson V2 Natural is 100% all original and its pots are dated to a, a first year of 1979. It comes with the original case and is in great condition. Only minor wear, finish wear on the back. So let's jump into the pictures. Look at those pickups in that bridge. You ever see any pickups like that before? It's got a weird, strangely contoured body. Very interesting guitar. It might be Karina wood. It looks like it's got that nice gold look with gold hardware. Nice headstock on it. It's the V2 truss rod cover. There we can see the electronics, so it's got the original, all the original parts in it. The serial number on the pot there dates it back to 1979. Made in USA, of course, it's a Gibson. It's got those Gibson tuners. Look at those vintage Gibson tuners. What a wild guitar. I, have, I don't think I've ever seen this model before. Wow, interesting. So it's four grand, a hundred bucks for shipping. Yikes, four grand. Anybody in the market for one, go out there. I'm, I don't think it's uh, sold yet. I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, you can see at the time I saw this, it had 37 watchers on it. But man, what a weird guitar. Let's go on to the next one. So here we got a Charvel Charvette. Uh, it says, works as it should. Has one busted string overall. Works well. 1980s or 90s model. It's a Charvette. And it's got that rounded strap body. It's got the slanted neck pickup. Charvel pickups. Humbucker and the bridge, they look like EMGs, but I don't think they're, maybe they're active. They don't, I don't know. Um, made by Charvel, so these aren't too sought after, the Charvettes. They were considered lower end, um, but they're still cool. If you're a Charvel fan or, and you know, you're looking to add one to your collection, this is 450 bucks plus 125 shipping. So you're looking at 575 plus if there's any applicable tax or any other types of fees. So not super cheap. We've got 13 watchers on this one. Cool guitar though, 1980s or 90s, they're not really too sure about it. I'm not exactly sure what years they made these Charvettes, but I think for someone looking for a Charvel, this is a nice affordable version because real Charvels are pretty penny. They're, you know, these old 80s models have really jumped up in the last couple of years. You used to be able to get them for like three or 400 bucks all day long. Model th one, two, three, four, fives. Yeah. I was like, wait, do they go up to, they, there's a model six too. Check this one out. This is a Fender Contemporary Strat Squire model with a Floyd Rose. The guitar is in great condition for its age. Just some minor dings, but the neck is basically mint. This guitar was a case queen for most of its life. The white finish has darkened to a nice off-white yellow. Hey, 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 hold up. I'm trying to read this here. 
Um, a really great player, a nice piece of history too. Made in Korea, so you know I love me some Korean guitars. Original whammy bar and gig bag are included. Weighs 7 pounds 5 ounces. 1989 model. I've never owned a Floyd Rose one, but I have owned multiple Squire Strats from the late 80s, 88 or so, up to 93 or 92. And they're nice guitars. Very nice necks on them. Great quality builds. Actually, I still own one of them. I modded it into a purple and blue Frankenstrat. And yeah, it's the E serial number, which those are the, the sought after models that people like. This one's got the, the Rosewood fretboard. And you can see it looks like it's in pretty good condition. I mean, like he said, it was a case queen, so I love that phrase. I always picture it locked away in somebody's closet in a case, and they've got like six or seven cases going across their their closet, and they might even have a piece of tape on the side that says which guitar's in each one. It's got that maple neck. You can see the locking nut has the through holes. A couple small little cracks at the neck joint. Eh, that one's more than small. Hey, what's up, dude? There's the owner. The back covers look to be in great condition. Got some chips here and there, but you know, I've I've worked on a Fender Contemporary Strat, which I believe was a Japanese model, an actual Fender, not a Squire, and that guitar was phenomenal. It was Jason's guitar, um, the Alien Blood one. Some of you guys probably remember that from I think season two of Trash to Thrash. This one is the Squire version, but like I said, 1989. That's a killer year for Squires. The Korean ones were amazing. Almost any Korean guitar is going to be something pretty sweet. So another one that. Yeah, I'd pick it up. You know, at, at over $500, though, that's that's $525, 524 if you want to get technical, plus any you know additional fees. So, not cheap, but quality. Now, this is an interesting guitar here. So, I think we got might have skipped over one. Here we go. The reason you saw that one was because of this one, actually. So, the ESP LTD TL12 12 string acoustic electric thin line guitar. If anybody out there has any experience with these thin lines, let me know, please, because I'm interested in this one. So, it's 399 bucks plus shipping. It says for sale is one ESP, blah, blah, blah. All working and in great condition with a few very minor scuffs and dings. Fishman Electronics ships in a soft bag. As as all my guitars and items are used, they may contain swirl marks, small dings and paint chips, blah, 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 only ships to the lower 48. So, okay. Um, most of them will, will require some type of setup. So let's get to the pictures. So interesting guitar. So this is an acoustic guitar, but look how thin it is. It doesn't have a traditional sound hole. It's a 12 string. It looks like an electric. Look at how low the action appears on these in these photos. It's made in Indonesia. It's got Grover tuners, it looks like. The Indonesia thing, you know, I'm not a huge Indonesian LTD fan, but I have played other guitars from Indonesia, and they're very nice. Just, I like the action on it. It's got the Fishman Electronics. It's black, which looks killer. Look how thin it is. It's like a, a, a Les Paul or, you know, an Eclipse. 12 string. I've got a 12 string Aria made in Japan. It's like a 1980s model or 70s model. It's a very nice vintage guitar. So if I didn't have that 12 string, I'd probably be jumping on this one. If someone wants to buy the Aria, hit me up and I'll, I'll sell it to you and I'll buy this one instead because this fits my collection better. It's got the binding on it. It's a beautiful guitar. Totally my style. I already have another LTD acoustic that I really like and this thing would match my collection a little better. But I, I, like I said, I already got a 12 string. I don't want to go through all the effort of trying to sell it unless it's to one of you guys direct. So if you want it, let me know. Here we have a rare vintage Schaefer three-quarter scale uh, metal guitar, it said. It's like a star, kind of. Look at that crazy pointy headstock. Look at this weird shape. It's a bolt-on. It's got diamond inlays. HSS configuration. Look at that crazy headstock. It comes to a point, and the D-string's right in the center, too. So, like, it's got a strange offset tuner configuration. I actually think this thing is pretty rad. With, like, a crackle paint job or something on it. A fret job, you know, re-radius the frets, throw new pickups in it, and a new bridge. This thing actually would be a monster, I think. 225 bucks plus 75 for shipping. Uh, has wear as pictured, works great, has a little scratchy in the knobbies. So we're gonna rewire it if we pick that thing up anyways. If somebody wants to buy that thing and get it shipped directly to me, or any of the guitars you, you see online on eBay on Reverb, that's the thing you can do. You can buy used guitars on eBay and Reverb. Have them shipped directly to me. Obviously, let me know first. 
have me fill out an estimate for you, so you know what you're getting yourself into here, but yeah, that's a sick guitar. I feel like that's got a lot of potential, and at just 300 bucks, you can have something really unique. What do we got next? Here, okay, so this is an uncommon Wolfgang color. You don't see these dark blue ones. I don't know what year this one's from, probably 2015 or 2014. It's one of the first years they made the EVH gear Wolfgangs with the light maple neck. It's got like a metallic dark blue body, which the first Wolfgang I ever bought to mod was this exact model. This one's modded with Seymour Duncan pickups. It's got some minor scratching here or there. So you can see around the pickups, a little bit of scratching. Really cool year though. I actually know somebody who's looking for one of these, so I need to send Michael these links. I don't know if Michael's watching this. Hopefully this one's still available if you're still in the market for one of these, but very cool. One of my favorite colors. That I, I like the white pickups in it too. They actually match it pretty well. I think the Blood Splatter Wolfgang? No, it was a red, white, and black Frankenstrap painted Wolfgang. This one's over in uh, Oklahoma, it looks like. So, cool guitar. I dig it. Not a bad price either. What was what was the price they had on it? Five eighty five shipped. And I actually think I have one more uh, Wolfgang that I just added to the folder. Here it is. Check this one out. EVH Wolfgang Standard Quilt Maple. Really nice. It's in great condition. Plays great. No issues at all. He's never seen a quilted top like this. These Wolfgangs play really good and can easily get that EVH sound plus just about any other sound you need. It's got a roasted neck, which is fast and smooth. Perfect fretwork, it says. And jump. let's jump into it because look at that. That quilted top is pretty out there. That is like a... Looks like the artificial intelligence Google processed images that they make. Very trippy looking. Got that dark roasted maple neck, which has a little bird eye on the back. Looks nice. The black headstock. They couldn't have done the matched headstock. See, I was just saying, this is an Indonesian made guitar. These Wolfgang standards are excellent guitars. So $455.70 for shipping. That's $525. That's a good price. Anybody looking for a Wolfgang to refinish, $525, I mean, they don't get much cheaper than that. Sometimes you can get a Wolfgang for $450, but you don't really get them any cheaper than that. So this is right in the ballpark. Plus, look at it. I mean, it looks... It's stunning looking. So now let's get into the questions because there was actually a bunch of questions this week and a bunch in response to the Dimebag video or the, the Pantera reunion. I was calling it a reunion for part of that video. Apparently a lot of people have said it's not really a reunion. They're not even trying to bill it as one, but some of the media has been saying it's a reunion. The things I'm seeing are saying reunion on them. So maybe they need to put out some official press conference, uh, you know, press uh, stuff so that we all know what this is. But here's the first one that, you know, these are just some of the, the comments I got under the YouTube video about it. And there was a lot of discussion back and forth because I made a lot of controversial points, I guess, in that video. But the first one here that I thought was interesting is from Michael. It says, well, there was at one time Black Sabbath featuring Tony Iommi, where Tony was the only original member. I was fortunate enough to see Pantera with Orgy, Static X, and Slayer opening. Insane lineup. None of those bands are, are fully equipped anymore. We've lost members of Static X, Slayer, and Pantera, so pretty crazy. In the early 2000s, he saw them all. I don't think Orgy is around anymore. Apologies if you guys are. So I don't really have a need to hear Pantera songs live. I agree, though, that this, is, that this tour is more of a tribute than a reunion. I know that Dimebag Daryl Estate is okay with the tour, but Vinnie Paul had zero interest in a Pantera reunion without his brother. Personally... I say let them do what they want and call themselves whatever they want. As a fan, I won't support it by seeing the show or purchasing merch. That's all I can do. So Michael, regular viewer of the show. We got Sean here. Think they should have just left it, to be honest. Was lucky to see Pantera twice and Damage Plan once. Would be strange seeing them without the two main men. That was kind of the, the angle I was taking. I, I considered Dime and Vinny to be the backbone of the band. Phil is, you know, he's an iconic voice, but I would be going more to see Dimebag than anything else. Uh, Raven said, I personally think they should have done a tribute tour with existing members of Pantera and had guest musicians from all over the world. I think the big four should be with Testament, not Anthrax. So I'll stop there. The reason he's saying that is because in the video I had said the big four is, uh, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer and Anthrax 
And I always thought Anthrax shouldn't be part of the big four because they're not that big. And I mean, let's be honest. I, I'm not, I never said they weren't good. I just said they're not that big. And I thought that Pantera would have been a better fit for the big four because they're like one of the great American, you know, heavy metal bands. But then, you know, somebody made a good counterpoint to that that we'll get to in a second. Um, the, the Ravens comment continues. Also, I'd seen Static X with Edsel Dope on vocals. It was pretty wicked. So I'm guessing that is, if you don't know Static X, their singer Wayne Static died. Uh, just a couple years ago, they did a tribute uh, tour without him, but he's the vocalist, the songwriter, you know, part the whole band probably writes with him. But, and he's a guitar player, guitar player, front man, like James Hetfield style. So how do you do a cover or tribute band without him? Well, they brought out a person who does a great impression of him and wore a zombified mask of Wayne Static. So it looked like his corpse was up on stage. As an art, you know, an artistic endeavor, I think that is awesome. So I didn't see the, the tour. I don't know how it sounded, but that's pretty badass. Um, they also wrote, I had seen Pantera twice in the early 90s and it was electric. Not sure about seeing this tour though. Great video as always. Rock on from Canada. Rock on to you too, Raven. Integrity 101 said, it's not Pantera, it's a celebration of Pantera's music. Enjoy it. Reunion is a word the lying mainstream media throws around for clicks. A true reunion was never possible after Dime died. Slayer toured without what is easily, easily, the two most talented members of Slayer, Dave and Jeff. No one said a damn thing, and Slayer is not a band with equal writing credits for all members on all songs like Pantera is. So... Okay, good points. Ah, cheers, guys. Got some good coffee here. I like a dark roast with some half and half in it. How do you guys like your coffee? Let me know in the comments. Paradise Pythons. Ooh, snake lover here. I saw them in 94 and 97. Best live shows ever. Dime is impossible to replace. I think it would have been a fun concert, though. You know, they just made me think as I was picturing Dimebag and what the live experience would have been. I picture him chugging beers and smoking a blunt on stage while he's rocking out. I don't know if that's what he does or not, but that's what I picture. And it makes me think of Unearth. Unearth, they like chug beers and do all this crazy stuff on, on stage, so very cool. This one made me laugh. Mom, can we have Pantera? No, we have Pantera at home. Pantera with Zach at home. Ha, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Brandon Smalley said, half of, half of the people you're talking to, the new generation, don't get Dimebag. And I think that's why it's so we can let them say, hey, I've seen Pantera. So I wonder, I mean, if they don't get Dimebag, why would they want to see Pantera in the first place? But certain people, I don't know, if this was like on a a big uh, multi-band, like, like a like a Ozfest or something or whatever, or, you know, not fest, if this was on like a metal tour or festival, then I could see that argument more, like that people just wanted to be able to say they've seen them. But people who don't know Dimebag, I mean, how big of a Pantera fan would they really be? And would they want to go see a band like Pantera if they aren't that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Compton McCairo says, come on, man, Phil and Rex are a part of that band. So I had said something like it should be a tribute band. It shouldn't be called a reunion because the things I'm seeing online, they're calling it a reunion. And yeah, I guess that was a little disrespectful. You can't go around calling it a tribute band fully if Phil and Rex, you know, are, the original band members are in it. Nevet, Nevet, we'll just go with that. I think it's kick-ass that they want to do a Pantera celebration. I think it would be even more disrespectful to let the awesome music just waste away. Also, I feel it would be disrespectful to Rex and Phil to call it a Pantera tribute when they were in Pantera also. Zach is the only guy for the job. He will play the dime stuff with respect. And yes, I'm going to go see it. Okay, yeah, good good points there. Michael said, hey Mark, just letting you know that they said it's a tribute tour, not a reunion. Zach and others, like Loudwire, have said they have the blessing of the Abbott family, and it's a tribute to Pantera, not a reunion. I'm also a fan of dime. I almost died the same year he did, got bit by a spider. He holds a place in my heart. Take care, rock on. So Michael, what kind of spider did you get bit by? Because that, if it almost killed you, man, 
Michael's a regular listener. Leave it down in the comments, Michael. I'm curious. Was it a widow? Was it a recluse spider or a violin spider? Because there's not a lot of spiders in the United States that can almost kill you. I would guess Black Widow and maybe a recluse are like mainly the two that could do that. Unless you're in Australia, then like any spider, right? That's what everybody says about Australia. Um, Beesar, Rock Beast. We'll just go with Rock Beast says, Dude, I feel conflicted. Dime is the entire reason I play. I also want to hear that music live. I think Tribute is the way to go. I'm going to go regardless. To me, there will never be anyone like Dime. He was the every man's guitar hero. I totally agree on the Mount Rushmore of metal comment. Yeah, I had said maybe Dime would be on the... Uh, the Mount Rushmore of metal guitar players, you know? Taylor says, hear how Zach talks about it. The Loudwire article is a decent summary. Seems like nobody is pretending it is Pantera, but a celebration of Pantera. That, I'm cool with. As far as matching the mannerism mannerisms, I think the move would be to not do that. I mean, I kind of agree with that, but also, when if I was there live in the crowd and somebody nailed the solo or got it damn close, I would love that. I've heard some of the way Zach plays Randy's stuff, and it's a it's a quite a bit different, so... I don't know. I know there's a lot of people out there who could crush it. Like I was saying in that video, Chris Broderick crushed the Waxel. It sounded so good, so... I don't know. Before we go on to this next one that starts to go into the Anthrax direction, because I, I accidentally disrespected Anthrax in that video, but... Um, somebody had also asked me about Journey, and they're like, what do you think about Journey? I know they're not a metal band, but... You know, I'm a huge Journey fan, to be honest. They got a, a singer after they kicked Steve Perry out of the band. And for people who don't know, Steve Perry was not the original singer. They had um, another guy, I think his name was Jeff or something. I'm not sure, I forget now. But they had another singer before that, and they used to actually be kind of a progressive band. Then they got rid of him. They brought Steve Perry in in the, the mid-70s or late 70s. And they became more of like a pop rock or, you know, popular rock band, mainstream style, and... I love that stuff. I, the you know lights, um, all all stone in love. The escape album, evolution album. I love Journey. I'm a huge fan. So I would never go see Journey with their Arnell is their new singer. I respect the guy. He's an amazing vocalist. He can nail Steve Perry stuff. But to me, Journey is Steve Perry, and that might piss people off too. But I I like all the guys um, in the band. The guitar player of Journey, of course, his, uh, Neil Sean, I was going to say, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, the drummer, Steve, uh, Nick, uh, what's his name, K Jonathan Kane on keyboards. They have an amazing lineup. All their musicians are super good, and they, they are all great backup vocalists. And I love Journey, but I would never go see them without Steve Perry. To me, it's Steve Perry is like the voice of Journey. That's what I would be going to see. But also, I don't want to go see Journey with some other band either, because like David Lee Roth, there was something missing when when he left Van Halen and he went out on his own, even though he had Steve Vai crushing it on guitar for him. Still, to me, it's all about the, the whole band together, and I don't know, I wouldn't go see Journey without it. I wouldn't go see Pantera without Dimebag. I'm not going to go see Van Halen without Eddie. Unless they did like some kind of cool tribute thing where they brought like, you know, did a, like a one-time show with like, um, Kirk Hammett does one song, you know, does a, a Van Halen song with the rest of Van Halen. Like they bring in, bring in different guitar players, get Steve Vai to do one song. I think that would be really cool, but you can't tie up all these bands from touring, you know, you have to be able to do it in like one show or something like that. So let's get into the Anthrax section here, because I had said that they shouldn't be in the big four and that pissed some people off. Dude, I cannot believe that you dissed Anthrax. I love Anthrax. They're one of my favorite bands. The talk of a Pan Pantera reunion with Zack actually began about 15 years ago. I was all for it then. I'm still for it now. You know, with, with Anthrax, I just have never gotten into them. If you guys are Anthrax fans, tell me their best album. Tell me where to start. Because I'll check them out and I'll give them another chance. But I need to know where to start. I actually did watch an interview with Matt Penfield talking to Zack Wilde. Zack Wilde's such a cool guy. And he, I don't think he was saying that it's a, a reunion, but I've heard other people saying a reunion. I don't know what the band is going to be called, if they're going to be under Pantera Reunion or what, but we'll have to see once tickets go on sale what they call this thing. Sammy said, Big Four is about the pioneers of thrash metal. 
in which Pantera has nothing to do with, although they are a great band. Anthrax's Among the Living and Spreading the Disease are great albums, but not much fun, uh, not much fan of other catalog. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to translate this into uh, proper grammar. Sorry if I'm like stuttering through this. In my opinion, the big four should be increased to the big six and add Testament and Exodus in. See, Exodus and Testament are still going strong today, so that's pretty awesome. They're, they were right there. Kirk Hammett was in Exodus before he joined Metallica, and yeah, I, I'm not mad at that idea, Big Six. Because honestly, I think Testament and Exodus might be bigger than Anthrax. Maybe not. Maybe I'm totally wrong about that. I'm sure you guys will let me know. Jesse said, yeah, Anthrax sucks. I agree with you there. By the way, I never said Anthrax sucks. I'm pretty sure I never said that because I don't think they suck. It's just not my style. But he said, I think Testament should have been in the big four instead. So there's another vote for Testament. What about Anvil, guys? Remember Anvil? There was a documentary about them on um, MTV or something or Comedy Star. Was it VH1? I don't know. Gilbert said, I agree 100% and yes, Pantera should have been in the big four. Not Anthrax, which is a good band, but not like Pantera. Ninja said, hey man, out of Cura. Okay, so now we're moving into another category of questions here. This is more of just gener generic or general questions. Hey man, out of curiosity, have you ever done a shattered mirror top? I haven't. Actually, honestly, don't even know how they do that. It looks like they must be applying an actual mirror on there and then hitting it with like a ball peen hammer or something that would cause the shattering out. I'm guessing that's how that's done. I've never done one though. I should ask Brian, Brian Ragland. You, I'm sure you've done one. I've seen it in your collection. Let us know. Maybe you can send me a link to your Facebook. You have a lot of great videos on your Facebook. Maybe you can link me to where you built yours. Elliot said, not sure if you saw my last question on Sunday Morning Shred, but have you ever tried painting a guitar chrome like the Ibanez Chrome Boy? I've heard that it's difficult to do, but was just wondering. Thanks. P.S. Keep up the great work. I will. Um, I've never done a chrome guitar either. I've actually been t going back and forth with somebody in my Instagram direct messages who is, you know, curious about sending me their snake bite. They have an LTD or an, possibly ESP. I think it's an LTD snake bite and they want to get it chromed. I'm a little intimidated to do it because I've never done chrome, but I'm going to have to do a test at some point. I'm just so busy these days. It's hard to find time to do experimenting and tests. I have no idea how to say that name. Not even going to try. <laughs> can you update us on the LTD EX? Well, yeah, I can. So that means you probably aren't following this channel because I've updated this channel and you must not be a Patreon member because I've talked about this on my Patreon quite a bit. But let's go over to this camera here. Here's how the LTD is looking now. So. Over on my Patreon, I've been rebuilding this guitar and doing step-by-step -step videos, coaching people who want to rebuild guitars how to work on guitars. So this guitar needs so much work that it's going to be a great course if anybody wants to rebuild a guitar with me. Go back and watch part one, which is the disassembly video. I show all my methods and tips and tricks for disassembling guitars. Then part two is about sanding it. I talk about different types of sanders and what grits to use and different techniques for different you know, parts of the guitar or types of guitars. Each one of these videos is like a half an hour or more. And it's me basically working in real time and talking to you. And then part three is how to bondo your guitar, do gener uh, generic or general repairs and fill holes using dowels and, and gluing things in and how to, how to repair the body and get it back into shape. So that's where this guitar is at right now. It's mostly bondoed. It's sanded in a lot of the spots, but this thing was so trashed that it needed multiple sessions of Bondo. So I did Bondo, sanded it, found more dings and dents that needed to be fixed. And the next thing I'm gonna have to do is after I finish the Bondo work, because there was like big chunks taken out of this guitar. I've been slowly rebuilding these spots. You can't just slop this much Bondo on there. You gotta build it up in layers. So, so it cures properly. And I thought about even doing wood, you know, a wood chunk there, but that would have meant I would have had to route out a section and on the edge of the guitar, it's a little tricky. So yeah, I've got a lot of the holes repaired. I've got a lot of it done, but um, I've got so much work here that the only time I really work on this is the next time I go to Bondo customer guitars, I'll grab this one and I'll Bondo it at the same time because I can't make this thing jump over the line of customer guitars 
people are, that are paying me money, they deserve to have their guitars done before this one is. So, this one's just getting done on the side for me. Whenever I'm working on other guitars and this needs the same kind of work, that's when this thing gets worked on. I, I can see I'm going to need to reseal some of the grain because it was so trash that I had to sand down kind of low in some spots and I went through the sealer and I have exposed grain. So that'll be the next part in the Patreon series. If you want to rebuild your guitar with me, go sign up to my Patreon. I think you get those videos with any of the tiers, pretty sure. So if we're as little as a dollar a month, you can sign up. But you really want to jump into like the $10 a month one because that's where you get like the big giveaway stuff, the you know, guitars and kill switches and all that stuff. But if you want to see a lot of content on that LTD EX, you got to go sign up to the Patreon because that's mainly where it's going. I'm also working on, see that Alien Blood Roads behind me? That's another one that's about to be finished up and that's going to be a Patreon exclusive. So it won't be on Trash to Thrash. I've already done an Alien Blood Roads and I don't really want to do a second episode kind of showing some of the same stuff I've already done. But if you want to, you know, it'll be a slightly different format, more vlog-like or more like real than... It's not going to be like as produced as a Trash to Thrash, but next week, uh, I think uh, this this coming Monday, I think, somewhere around here, I have a posting schedule that would say, but yeah, it's coming to Patreon, that Alien Blood. So that's going to be fun. When I'm done with the Explorer, I'm going to do a full episode of Trash to Thrash, like a complete normal episode, but it's going to be Patreon exclusive. So I'm trying to get more of you guys to go over there, help support the channel even more than you already do. Thanks so much to all the Patreons, by the way. I just shipped out the H100, <laughs> sweet guitar, and the Kill Switch. So, I gave away a Kill Switch, too. I always do, like, a little runner-up gifts. Or giveaways, or raffles, or whatever, when I give away a guitar. Okay, so, Josh said a rebuild community would be awesome. So, over on the Patreon, I'm actually starting this, too. I started up a Discord channel. And I'm going to link it all into the Patreon, so everybody who's a Patreon member will have access to this. This Basically, it's like a message board. And when I'm working on guitars, there's certain guitars that I'm going to be posting my progress on the message board. So people can come on and talk about them. Basically, all the shop builds like that I build that are non-commissioned, that I get ideas for, and I just want to build up and then sell. Those ones are going to all be on there, and I'm going to have you guys giving me tips and tricks and ideas for some of them. And then I also want you guys to go on there post up your projects or upcoming projects and get inspiration and ideas from from the community the guitar guts community so we can all have like a, a a rebuilding community together like you know share our tips and tricks and it'll be a private thing so we could we could all feel a little more free to give away some of our secrets i give away all my secrets but i know a lot of you guys don't want to give up all your secrets and at some point i'd even pay some other professionals who do rebuilds and do refinishes and stuff to come in there and give some tips and tricks and whatever. So um, I'm in the middle of trying to rebuild an ML Ultra from the late 90s that had the scarf joint crack, but I'm kind of disabled and don't have much funds to do much to it. I've got to, I've got it re-glued and new components just need it rewired. I tried one of those cheap soldering irons, but it doesn't get hot enough to solder to the pot. So that'd be another thing we would talk about over on that channel tools that we use and have maybe even a master tool list that that you guys can suggest things to me that you guys have tried out and you guys can recommend and then we'll get like an affordable tool list or something on there that'd be cool links to everything john madden no john martin oh okay ever think of using uh search plastic bit tubs i think that might have been supposed to say clear pl plastic tubs for parts but then like autocorrect came in i don't know so you ever think of using clear plastic tubs for parts? The reusable and the right size could hold all the parts for a single build. I'd love to see a dime bag guitar with an EVH bumblebee finish after all the original is gutted with dime bag. Okay, so actually, here's a little uh, secret. Ooh, I haven't told anybody this. I got an ML that I'm working on that I had bought locally through like uh, Offer Up app, I think, and. I'm going to be rebuilding it as a dime EVH kind of thing because dime was buried with the, the bumblebee. So I'm actually going to be painting my ML with the bumblebee colors, the striping. But I'm also going to be doing like, you know, throw some EVH, like the EVH Nelly big kill switch made by Tessie and maybe a detuna on it. Um, actually, it doesn't even have a Floyd Rose, so I don't think I can put a detuna on it. But I want to make it kind of like a shark. Like a shark hybrid bumblebee on an ML. 
That would be sick, right? If you got any other weird ideas for that one, throw them on there. I want to hear your guys' crazy ideas. Lucian asked, how do you own a Glock in California? I had actually uh, accidentally showed a photo of my gun. I was flashing it to you guys so you guys know what's up. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, with, with the Blood Wolf on last week's Sunday Morning Shred, I was showing some pictures of the guitar and I, apparently I left a picture of my Glock on top of the guitar. I, I did a photo session with that. I never posted the pictures because the pictures didn't turn out as cool in, you know, in real life as they were in my head. But... I showed that picture and he said, how do you own a Glock in California? You just buy them. You go to the gun store and you buy them. It's, you know, you can have guns in California. It's a liberal state, but uh, I live in a Republican county in a liberal state. So it doesn't feel like it's like, uh, you know, Hollywood or Los Angeles here where I live in Ventura County, even though I'm only like 25 or 35 minutes from, actually I'm about five minutes from LA County. So if you just go down the highway that way, you run into LA County pretty quick. R2 asked, what's what's that white single humbucker star guitar in the back? So, two people asked me about this LTD over there. I'm pretty sure he's talking about the LTD that's hanging over there. It's a wild looking guitar. Ironically, there is another star guitar. Let me show you guys this one. And I'm going to show this one on another like uh, unboxing slash vlog video because this was sent in to me by Taryn. This is part of a trade-in deal. This is a Charvel star that I just got traded in from Taryn. I'm going to be working on one of her guitars and this one I think I'm going to keep in the collection. I think I'm going to sell my Edward Star which is complete and it's awesome but this one I don't know I don't have any Charvels in the collection right now. I've got a few Edwards and I don't have any plans to add a Charvel so I think this would be pretty cool to add to the collection. A Charvel Star. How sick is this thing? It's got the pointy headstock. I got the neck over there so that one's probably going to go into the collection but I have a feeling that's not what R2 is talking about there. I got a couple questions about this guitar. I think I accidentally left it in the background here hanging. I've been trying to hide this guitar because the owner of the guitar, Alan, asked me to keep it out of the video. He's like, I don't want to see, I, wa I want to see it when it's done and it arrives. I don't want to see any progress photos. So Alan, fast forward at least uh, two minutes here in the video or, or, or just exit out of the video. But I'm going to grab the guitar. I'll show you guys real quick. This is because you guys are followers of the second channel here, and I appreciate that because there's not as many of you guys. We just cracked a thousand subscribers this last week. You guys are awesome. So here's a preview. This is an LTD AX50. We filled in the neck pickup cavity. It's been it's nice and smooth, feels great. So it's just about ready. We're gonna be adding some blood splatter. Gonna leave it satin white, and then we're gonna add a couple decals here and there. So. We're also building a custom case for this guitar. It's a really cool guitar though, the AX series, by the way. I'm not really too familiar with them, but look how awesome it looks. It looks pretty, pretty freaking metal. Alan's a really cool dude, so yeah, he's gonna, I'm sure he's gonna enjoy this thing. The LTD AX50. Okay, so let's see, what else do we got here? All right, guys, and that's gonna do it for this week on the show. If you want to have your guitar featured on the show, I'm going to be doing another episode coming up soon showing your guys' creations. If you have any modded guitars, even if you didn't mod it yourself, you bought it modded or had someone mod it for you, repainted, so anything interesting, something custom, we want to see your cool creations. So shoot a three to five minute video. I don't know how long you, you can do it. Longer or shorter, whatever is fine. But um, shoot a video, shoot it horizontal, no copyrighted music. But if you want to jam on the guitar, that's totally fine with me. We'll play it on the show. I love showing your guys' creations. So I put a call out on Facebook or on Instagram earlier today, the day I'm recording this, and I got a lot of people saying that they want to send them in. It's a little tricky sending in your high def videos, you know, the email programs and all that stuff, they limit you. Even Instagram, you can't send like full resolution videos. So I've actually set up like a guest Dropbox account. And if you DM me or email me and you have a video to send in, I'll send you some login information and a link to Dropbox. You can log in under one of my accounts, upload your video, and then I'll take it, cut and take it out of there, and I'll put it in my my folder for guitars to share on Sunday Morning Shred. So if you got a guitar that's cool and you want to share it with us, you know, send me an email, let me know, and I'll hook you up with the info. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, hit that subscribe button. Go sign up to the Patreon. You guys already are doing everything I would ask anyways like that. So you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys soon.
Rock on, my friends. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to be subscribed to this channel and also hit the like button for this video. Here's a couple links to some videos that if you like this one, you'll probably enjoy as well. Be sure to come back next Sunday because we do this every week. And if you want to help support Guitar Guts, go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon. Links to that and my contact are down in the description below.